Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast and I share what the Spirit of God is, has put in, put in my heart to share with you, can we call for that daily bread? Now, that's what we do every day on this broadcast. Are you ready? Release your faith with me as we declare. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. I receive it in Jesus' name. Angels, go bring forth that which is for my good today. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle today. And hey, today we are having our special meeting. This evening by 6 o'clock, the spirit of prophecy. Now, the meeting is holding live. But if you are not in Abuja, you can join us online on YouTube or Facebook and then on Mixel. The, the addresses or the information is on your screen. I don't want you to miss this program today. Join us with an expectant heart. There's going to be the power of God available to heal and to touch you. We are believing God for great miracles today. Praise God. So, so I'll be looking forward to seeing you. Invite your friends. Invite everybody you need to invite. Come not just to hear the word, but come expecting a miracle today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Now, I've been sharing with you on being fruitful and productive. Now, that's what Jesus have called us to do. He says, you didn't choose me. I chose you and ordained you that you should bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Now, I've explained to you that bearing fruit, he didn't say fruits, he said fruits. It is a quality. It is a kind of fruit that we bear. And that's what I've been explaining to you all month. Now, yesterday, I was talking to you about your finances, being fruitful where your finances is concerned. You see, to be fruitful means to bear a certain kind of fruit. Now, that's, that's one thing you need to understand. To be fruitful doesn't mean that, you know, I, I think some days ago I explained that to you. God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful. Then he now says, multiply. Now, people think they are the same thing. They are not the same thing. So, when a woman hasn't gotten a child yet, oh, she, she, she fruitful? Uh, you know, oh, I'm praying for fruitfulness. You know, you go for a meeting. Every, we're going to pray for fruitfulness in your marriage. And when you say fruitfulness in your marriage, guess what they are thinking about? Children. Praise God. No, but when God says, be fruitful, and then he now says, multiply. He wasn't saying the same thing. Be fruitful has everything to do with quality. And now when he says multiply, that's when he's talking about childbearing. See that now? Understand this. So when we say fruitful, we're not just talking about multiplicity. We are talking about quality. 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 When we talk about bearing fruit, we're talking about quality. So yesterday I was sharing with you how if, if, you're, if, you're, if you don't align your finances right, and that has to do by obeying God's command, then you cannot be fruitful in your finances. You see, it's not all about having money. That's one thing you must understand. It's about having money the way that God wants you to have money. If your money is not exactly the way God wants you to have it, then though you have money, your bank account might be sweating, but you are not fruitful. Now that's why you find Jesus meeting the man, the rich young ruler. And he asks Jesus, what must I do to inherit life? And Jesus said, you know the drill. Keep the commandments. And the man said to Jesus, I have kept all these from my youth. 
And the Bible said Jesus looked at him and loved him. And Jesus made a statement to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell all you have, give to the poor, and then come follow me. Now, when you look at that statement, you would wonder, is it that Jesus had a problem with him being rich? No! Jesus was talking about fruitfulness. Because another translation said, go do that then you will have an account in heaven. Because Jesus was talking about the kind of money, the kind of wealth he should have. What does that tell you? That tells you that, that presently what he had wasn't really bearing the right kind of fruit. Because you, you see, that's why Jesus told him to go sell everything he had and give to the poor. And come follow him. That doesn't mean come follow me broke. Because it's only broke people that I work with. No sir. No sir. Because the disciples looked at him after he left. And said to Jesus. We have left all to follow you. And Jesus immediately replied them and said. There is no one who has left father mother house land and all this things that will not receive in this life a hundredfold you see that now jesus was actually giving that man an opportunity to receive a hundredfold now that's the completeness of wealth the completeness now a hundredfold doesn't mean a hundred times understand that because you hear people say, eh, all, these, all these things don't, don't work. If you say, I'll receive hundredfold. Okay, I've given one car. Am I not supposed to receive a hundred cars? That's not what God was saying. That's not the mind. You see, that's the problem a lot of people. You, you, don't, you don't try to reason. Jesus said to the Jews one time, why do you not understand my speech? You see, now you hear a hundredfold. All they can think about is a hundred times, one hundred. So if I give one, and, and people have been so foolish to do that kind of giving in, 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 in church, and they don't see that kind of result. I'll tell you what a hundredfold is. A hundredfold means completeness of that thing. And now what does it mean? What it means is this. If I give one car, to God. Now, I, I, I don't give that car because I was emotional. I give that car because I'm demonstrating my faith. It's an act of faith. I have, I have gone before the Lord and, and the Lord have ministered to me. Yes, go give that car. Now, when I give that car, I'm going to receive a hundredfold blessing of that car. Now, so what does that mean? It simply means that I had just one car. And so I give it away. A hundredfold blessing is from that moment, I will never lack a car in my life again. That's what it means. Wherever I go to in this world, I will get a car. Without struggling, without, most times even without paying for it. Now, you know, you understand what I mean. It doesn't necessarily mean I will anywhere I go in this world, I'll buy a car. That that doesn't. It, it just simply means I step into a new place. I don't know. I'll have a car to use. Someone will just get. Hey, hey, why why don't you use my car? I'm like, oh, okay. No, no, no. Throughout your duration of stay, you can use this car. Like, oh, wow. Thank you. You don't realize, and then you you leave that place. You go to another place, and then the same thing is happening without you begging for it, without you asking for it. You know what's working there? A hundredfold blessing is working. And, and something happens to the car that you own or the car that, and you, you know, after you finish giving that car. Something happens to your other car and then while you're thinking of, oh, how do I fix it? What do I do? And suddenly someone, is like, ah, what happened to your car? Um, just had a minor accident. I have to send it to the mechanic. Oh, um, you know what? Ah. I'm, I'm getting another car immediately. What's going on here? That's the hundredfold blessing. That's what the hundredfold blessing is. It means where that thing is concerned, you will never 
lack. That's what it means. But people don't understand this. So you, you find them thinking wrong thoughts and, and where those things are concerned. So Jesus was giving that young man such an opportunity. Why? Because of the quality of wealth he was looking at this man having. Because he was a good man. It's the same thing with Job. Many people don't understand what happened to Job. I, I've, I've said this time and time again. We, we talk about Job and say, oh, Job's problem was his confession. No, that's not true. Listen, if, if, if you study the life of Job carefully, you realize that that was not his problem at all. Job was fine when suddenly Satan went before the Lord. You know, the Bible said the sons of God were having a meeting and Satan showed up and God asked him, where are you coming from? And then he says, from walking to and fro there. And God, it was God that said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Question is, what was God thinking Satan was going to consider Job for? Definitely not something good. <laughs> so God bringing Job, the attention of Satan to the personality of Job, what was the intent? I'll tell you. You know, because we say, oh, Job, was, Job confessed and said, the thing that I feared most have come upon me. So Job was living in fear. There is something that happened. Now, if Job was living in fear from the beginning of his life, he wouldn't have been blessed. He was already blessed. So at what point did fear come in? I'll tell you. Because now, God had blessed him with everything that he needed for the earth, with the, in the earth. And now God was now concerned about him bearing fruit. So, the Lord began to minister to Job's heart. Just like Jesus told that rich young ruler. Job, I want to take you into another level of, of blessings and wealth. And Job said, wow, glory. He said, yeah, glory. But I want you to do something for me, Job. So what is it, Lord? I want you to give out everything you have. Just like Jesus said to that rich young ruler. And the same way the rich young ruler looked at all he had and shook his head and walked away. Well, that was the same challenge Job was having. But you see, because the Bible said Job was a perfect man, it means God was bound. See that now? God was bound to bless Job with what is called true riches. What Job had before wasn't true riches. But God wanted to bless him with true riches. So God says, Job, I want you to give out everything you have. Because I want to bless you. And Job kept struggling with it and struggling with it. And it was at that point, fear came into his heart. Yeah. Because fear comes in most times when you walk in disobedience. So he said, I was not in safety. Meaning, I've been trying to tell the Lord that, look, this thing that you're asking me to do, <laughs> how is it going to work? So because God was bound to fulfill his word where Job is concerned, God introduced Satan into the equation. Satan, come. Look at Job. And Satan looked at Job and said, Ah, does he fear you for not? Put your hand and touch what he has, and he will curse you to your face. Hey, guess what? God says, Go ahead. I have put everything in your church. Do as you wish, but don't touch him. And Job began to lose everything. Now, do you know the truth? When Job got that first news, that he had losses. If at that moment he had realized himself and said, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm ready to obey your word. God would have told the devil to stop right there. I'm telling you the truth. But he didn't. Job was still trying to claim right. But he didn't know that God was setting him up for fruitfulness. It is a quality. 
That's what God was setting him up for. But then, instead of him to realize it, he kept going on and said, what's going on? What's going on? This is not fair. That's what Job was thinking. This is not fair. This is not fair. This is not fair. I've kept my, I've kept, I've walked in righteousness before the Lord. I have not stolen anybody's thing, you know. And he kept on and kept on and Satan continued. Next time Satan went to God and said, ah, I've done part of it too. But the guy is still doing strong head. Let me go further. So he was now trying to turn the whole thing. And you know God, God is never scared where his children are concerned. And so Job continued and continued and continued and continued until, until God showed up and said, all right, it's time. And the Bible said God turned the captivity of Job and Job walked right into his hundred percent. You know why? Because after all the lost. God demanded from Job to accept his fate and move on. Now that was the period God was making him to turn over all his losses into a seed. Oh, you don't know that yet. He had lost everything. But then now he is before the Lord and the Lord says, Job, yes sir. Despite all your friends have said against you. I want you to pray for them and bless them. Look, I'm the one in pains here. They are supposed to pray for me and bless me. They are not supposed to speak the way they spoke to me and against me in my face. They know me, yet the kind of things they were saying about me. God says, Job, bless them, pray for them and bless them. Now you see, before you bless them, your heart has to be clear of every evil thought. So you see, the clearing of the heart, the first thing he would have done, or he was to do, which he did, was to accept his fate as the will of God and roll the care over to the Lord. It's just like someone stealing something from you. It's your choice to spend the rest of your days looking for that person who stole that thing from you. But as a child of God, do you know? Because you see, first and foremost, there was no way that person would have stolen that thing from you without God being aware. It didn't take God by surprise. Don't ever think someone stole. God, Lord! God, I said, what happened? What happened? They stole my car. Huh? How? Where did you pack it? Come on now. <laughs> God. That's not true. Oh, they've stolen it. Huh? Okay. You know, the first thing you, you, you do, try to look for it. Now you've done everything possible to look for it. You can't seem to find it. You got to the police. Look, I, I came to make a report. You've waited one week, two weeks. What's going on? Yeah, you know, and then they start, you know, over here, you know, they, they say, oh, we need money for this. We need money for that. And then you realize, come, I'm spending a lot of money looking for this thing. And then you get to that point as a child of God, like, okay, Lord, I have not spoken to you about this matter. What would you have me do concerning this? Say that now. And then the Lord says to you, let go. Lord, let it go? How? It's so funny. You've already lost the car. And then God is saying to you, let it go. And you're finding it difficult to let it go. You've lost it already. See that? That's, that's the human heart. And then you struggle with that and struggle with that. And then, like, Lord, well, I've decided to let it go. Now, you see, that time you decided to let it go, you are turning that loss to a seed. So, you are going to receive a harvest from that car that was stolen from you as though you willingly gave out the car. That's what it's called, seed of equal benefit. In other words, just as if I sowed it. So it's going to bring the action, it's going to bring the same kind of benefit. That's why I tell God's children, we, we don't lose anything. We don't. Jesus himself said, 
Give to everyone who asks of you. And from anyone who takes away your goods, don't ask him back. He didn't tell you how they take it. Maybe they stole it. Maybe they, 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 they borrowed it. Or He said, don't ask them back. But you know, all those instructions, like I've told you before, they are all controlled by the Spirit of God. So, I mean, it's just you going to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, what, what do I do in this circumstance? And the Lord will tell you. There are times you'll tell him, relax, you'll find it back. And then just relax, he will bring it for you. There are times he will tell you, let it go. But you see, it's not in your place to start running helter-skelter, breaking your head over the whole situation and trying to get that thing back. Pause and always ask the Lord what his mind is. Praise God. Always ask the Lord what his mind is. And when he reveals his mind to you, accept it so when job did that the bible said god turned his captivity around and in a short while he became twice as rich as he was before how do you explain that now this one is not the kind of riches that you grow and grow like he did the first one this one it is true riches it was carrying the fruit of god's blessing on it and that's what god wants from us so when we teach you these things, it's not just about having money. It's about having money, the kind of money that God wants you to have with the kind of testimony backing it up. Because see, that testimony is what, really, that's what differentiates you between an unbeliever. See that now? Because, yo, I have money. Unbelievers have money also. I have two cars. Unbelievers have five. But we're never in a competition with them. The difference between us is the kind of money we have. Our money is saved in our heavenly bank account. Theirs is saved here on earth. So you see, inflation, inflation affects theirs. It doesn't affect us. Now that's what God is talking about. So you must make sure that your finances reflect the fruits that's the fruitfulness we're talking about. It must re repre represent God. It must show God. When you tell people how you get money, they must, they, must, they must see God in the whole midst of it. Praise God. Our time is up today. Hear me. God wants you to bear the right kind of fruit. And that's what he's called us to do. And I pray for you today. Everything that is standing as an obstacle to you bearing this kind of fruit. It's falling apart in the name of the Lord Jesus. Go and be fruitful in your finances. And in every area of your life. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. I hope I'm trusting the Lord to see you this evening. In the meeting by 6 p.m. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.